Guitar tips, guitar tips, they're just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy. Guitar Tips is my weekly video blog series and uh, I post a brand new Brand new tip right here each and every Friday. Most Fridays there is not the sound of yard work going on in the background, but uh, just one of those days. Uh, I live on a quiet little cul-de-sac, sort of in a canyon. Uh, it's usually very quiet here, but not today. So, uh, this week's guitar tip, guitar tip 101 is the difference between open D tuning and open G tuning. The difference between open D tuning and open G tuning. Now, I touched on this a little bit last uh, time in the Get Lost episode, and I touched on this a little bit uh, quite a while ago in a tip, I can't even remember which uh, number it is, but the tip is called uh, get to know an open tuning. But I've had a lot of questions about, uh, well, about last week's tip and just about tunings in general and um, and what to do with tunings. So um, if you're already a tunings expert, uh, I hope you'll still learn something here, but from the feedback I get, a lot of uh, guitar tip viewers are still um, kind of just trying to figure out open tunings and since I really uh, find it to be a, a very exciting area of the guitar and still still relatively new to my guitar world um, I'm a bit of an evangelist for uh, experimenting with tunings and trying out some different things so um, that's where I'm coming from I, I avoided tunings for years and years because none of my young uh, none of my guitar heroes when i was young seemed interested in any kind of tuning other than standard uh e a d g b e tuning um and uh so i just kind of brushed it off like almost uh like somebody raking leaves off of a gravelly uh anyway um <laughs> And uh, anyway, last week I, I mentioned that I had read in a Ry Cooter interview many years ago that he talked about the difference between open D tuning and open E tuning for him. And uh, I looked and I could not find that article online. Um, if I do find it, I will post a link to it down below. But uh, as of this uh, recording right now, I couldn't find it. And. Uh, uh, that might be a little mysterious that uh, what he said, at least the way I remember what he said, is that open D tuning was a good blues slide tuning for melodic playing, and that G tuning was a really good tuning for rhythm guitar playing. So much so, I, I, I later discovered that a lot of times, even if a song was in D, Cooter would use G tuning. Uh, to play in the key of D, and I'll get to that a little bit later in this. But first, I just want to start out with open D tuning, and kind of. Well, you. I hope you'll find this helpful. I, I find this stuff really interesting. So, open D tuning. I'm already there. Most of the guitar gets tuned down. So your low E will go to D. A stays where it is. D stays where it is. Your G will go to F sharp. Again, that's down. B will go down to A, and your high E will go down to D. So the, the whole tuning is D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. And in a way, you could think of this orientation as kind of an E orientation. And, and I say that because if, if we were in standard tuning and you played your basic E chord here, from low to high, uh, in terms of function, you'd be playing root, five, root, three, five, root. And in this open D tuning, that's exactly what we've got. Root, five, root, three, five, root. 
So even though we're in D, I think of this as kind of relating to the E shape. And that may be, I, I don't want to put any words in Ry Cooter's mouth, uh, but that may be where he's coming from when he says it's a good kind of uh, melodic bluesy tuning, especially for slide. Um, because if you think about the way a lot of guitar players look at the guitar when they are soloing, when they're when they're playing melodic stuff, they tend to get in blues boxes. And a very common blues box is, uh, I'm not gonna play these notes, I'm just gonna put my fingers down because since we're in a different tuning, the, the notes are gonna sound different. But you are, if, let's say we're in A. You guys all know the A minor pentatonic box here that we'd have for blues. We're in A, so you kind of just grab where A is and put that box there. And that's kind of how slide is. Um, I'm not a great slide player, but you get the idea. You, if we're playing in this tuning and, uh, and the chord goes to A, I'm probably going to park the slide at the fifth fret. Just in the same way that you would park yourself at the fifth fret in a pentatonic position, so I, I see that as a as a in a, in a way explaining why this is really oriented towards melodic playing, especially in the blues idiom. You know, the, the super uh, kind of cliche thing is, is this thing. What would be up here often the the, the Elmore James dust my broom lick. So that's cool. Also, a nice thing about this tuning is that you've got a root on top, which you also would have in the blues box, although you get the extra minor third on top too. So that's, I think, where Cooter is coming from. But the more I really thought about it since last week, I've been listening to a lot of Bob Dylan lately. And... Um, you know, Bob Dylan used this this kind of tuning, I think actually in open E, but which is all the same, just a whole step higher, um, on a record called Blood on the Tracks from 1975. Near as I can tell, um, every he plays every song on that record in this same tuning, which it just goes to show you how unlimited a tuning can be. So I'm, I'm gonna grab my capo here and I'm going to go to capo 2 and I'm going to show you just kind of not note for note how to play Bob Dylan songs but just kind of a way around two of the songs on Blood on the Tracks and it goes against what I said um, about D not being a great rhythm tuning oh, sorry one more thing before I get into the capo is that one thing that makes this not a great rhythm guitar tuning is that um, this kind of orientation towards where the root is is so low down it makes kind of everything into kind of a power chord thing so it doesn't give you a lot of like harmonic uh, complexity if you you know it's great if you're playing like rock and roll and just kind of doing that So that's that's cool. That is definitely rhythm guitar playing. But uh, when we get to open G, you'll you'll see what I mean about why I think uh, it's a why I agree with what I think Cooter meant. <laughs> um, so I'm at capo two now, which puts open D into open E. There's a song on that record called um, "Simple Twist of Fate." The one chord in this tuning, you could just play this. The, the song goes uh, E, E major 7, E7, seven, A, A minor, E, B, A, E, B, E. So they sat together in the park. But instead of playing the first chord as open, he plays the first chord here, I think. It could just be these two fingers. Sometimes it sounds like this. So I'm, uh, relative to the capo, I'm at f uh, five, four, three. And then you just 
drop the, the lowest note down. Now, if, if you don't want to play the three finger version, the two finger version would be the exact same thing. Just the low note drops down. I'm just moving my fingers out of the way so you can see. is that's open two open one two open and then goes to, to four minor which is um, from the top down now uh, oh five four five and then just a little walk down Again, it depends, you know, one day I'll listen to that recording and I'm pretty sure it's this. Another day I'll listen and I'm pretty sure it's this. The, the difference is, it, in the sound, if you do this, you're doubling the third. And if you do this, you're doubling the fifth. Um, it's a subtle difference that, you know, in the context of a full band may not really matter. Anyway, that's one way to use this tuning. There are so many, but that's kind of a neat way to do it, okay? Uh, also from that same record is a song called Buckets of Rain. So there's this... Now instead of being on the middle strings, we're on, on the first and third string. That's where I'm at. trying to show you the note for note way to do it but just what the basic moves are this is 12 bar blues and then it goes to the four chord so that's a little bit more sort of country blues So the, uh, those are neat moves, totally different kind of way of thinking about this tuning. You can also just play off the low strings. Wherever you put your focus um, kind of changes the utility of this tuning, but I, I find it super useful. Um, I hope you'll check out both of those songs. Uh, the first one I played is Simple Twist of Fate. The second one is uh, Buckets of Rain. Again, not playing the song literally, but just showing you where the, the layout of the, of the music is on in this tuning. So let's now switch to um, open G tuning. D stays, A is gonna drop down to G. D stays. sharp will have to come up to G, A will go up to B, okay that's close enough. Now the reason that I feel like this is a good rhythm guitar tuning is first of all three of the strings are the same as in standard tuning, D, G, B are haven't changed at all from standard. So, sorry, like that's part of the C chord, that's part of an A minor chord. I'm just thinking of things that live on these three strings. That's an A chord, A sus, here's, here's, a, here's a G chord, here's another G chord. These are all, you know, your fingers know where you're going because it's the same as, as always. With the added benefit is now we get this high uh, D and this low D and this G. So now we can, just like with open D tuning, we can still do this kind of G 
on very thin. But now it's one, it's shifted one string higher up on the guitar to the treble side. So it starts to be more in the rhythm guitar range. I mean, if you're in uh, Ramon's cover band, the rhythm guitar range is all, you know, on power chords. But if you're, if you're not in a Ramon's cover band, probably rhythm guitar is more in this register anyway. So uh, I like it because it's already pretty familiar. I like it because all of the, the kind of moves that you do are in a, a good register to, to speak. So th this tuning is more associated kind of with with Keith Richards, like a... just one thing you can do with it you can you can use it for slide if you're into muddy waters um. you know that's in that tuning um, uh, death letter blues that the white stripes recorded um, uh, Sunhouse tune uses that kind of tuning for slide. I think she plays in open A. Lowell George uses that kind of tuning for slide. Again, slide's not really my thing, but rhythm guitar wise, I just love, you know, you, if you if you remember in open D tuning, this is the same one to four move, just in open D, it's on a lower set of strings. Now it's here. And, um, you know, you can also use this tuning for playing in D kinds of things which might be confusing but check it out I'll do this with capo so I'm at capo 3 now you would think open G tuning I'm in B flat now because I'm three half steps up but actually because of the shapes I'm going to use I'm in F so Dire Straits uh, has a song called Romeo and Juliet that does this exact same kind of thing. Uh. Those are kind of the moves. And um, Cooter does that same kind of stuff. transcription note for note of, of anything at all but I find this tuning really useful uh, Cooter if you're interested uses this exact same tuning and capo position for a song called Tattler on uh, Paradise and Lunch um, and the song that I was just kind of messing around with there is called Romeo and Juliet which is from a Dire Straits record called Making Movies so um, that's how I see the difference in these in these tunings. When I said last week, echoing uh, Cooter, that one is melodic and one is harmonic, um, you know, that's sort of true, but then you look at this Dylan record, Blood on the Tracks, and he got 10 songs out of this one tuning, and no, no two songs on that record really sound alike. So um, I have to take back what I, if there's any implication that that tuning was limiting or a one-trick pony that's obviously not the case so I hope this is helpful um, maybe I'll continue down this road for a couple of tips and if you have any questions um, we can make this a little bit more conversational instead of um, me just 
talking into my iPhone, which is what I'm doing right now. So if you have any questions, please uh, put uh, put a comment in the in the comment box down below. We can get a little conversation going about these different tunings and how to apply them. Um, I'm curious if you are into Open D or Open G, what is your favorite song in whatever one of those tunings that uh, that you like? So what's your favorite Open D song or what's your favorite Open G song? I'm curious. Um, I'm not wearing a Guitar Tips t-shirt this week, but uh, they are here if you're interested in a Guitar Tips t-shirt. There's some information down below. I will ship one anywhere in the world. Um, Martin Guitar Strings has been very, very good to me. Thank you, Martin Guitar Strings. Uh, if you're interested, these are a set of retro, retro series. They're nickel strings, not the typical bronze that you see. Um, and I'm happy to say they're not coated with any plastic uh, nonsense. They're just metal strings. Uh, that's about it. The difference between open D and open G. That's what this tip is about. Guitar tip 101. My name is Adam Levy for Guitar Tips. Stay tuned and take good care.